Okay, well, um, here's part one of the MTD Yardman uh, snowblower fix thing. Uh, this is a customer's snowblower. Um, I've already opened up the box you've seen in my other video. Um, I'm going to be replacing um, the two skid shoes, um, which go on right there, because they're completely tired. Um, this new drive disc, because this one here is uh, going down and it's very bad badly cracked. There's a good little chunk. Um, but yeah, I'm going to drive this. And I also have to replace this, uh, this spring here um, that goes right there. Uh, it looks like it rusted off and then snapped. And it's supposed to connect into right there. Um, but yeah, so that's going to get re hooked on. Um, it also needs new belts. My dad's going to pick those up for me tomorrow. And um, i got to take off the wheels, it looks like. Stick those parts over there. I gotta take off the wheels, um, and so I can get access to that right there. Um, that's where the bearings are. I'm um, gonna have to take off that one. I think that one as well. Um, don't know yet, but we'll soon find out. So, without further ado, let me get started. Um, also, want to have him take the plow off the DLT just to make some room. Um, don't think I'll be using it this week or anything. I mean, it's pretty damn warm out. It's only like uh, 50 degrees. I think it's like 49 degrees out. Uh, but yeah, there's that. Very nice out. And uh, let me get working on this. Okay, that wasn't too, too bad. Um, all I had to do was just undo uh, the bolt that was on that little part right there. And then there was another bearing piece right here. Um, I'm going to take that bearing out. Uh, all the bearings look like they're in real good shape. There's one and there's two. Um, now I'm just going to pop this guy off. Should just slide off. Yep, just like it should. Now I'm just going to replace this uh, skid plate. Looks like I need a 7 8 uh, socket and pop those things off. Um, so without further ado, we'll do it from there. Okay, well, I got the, uh, the bolts off and I'm getting ready to uh, install the new um, drive disc here. Um, definitely a little bit more meatier on that, so let's pop this thing out of the vise. Go. Let's see if this thing should just pop off. All right, I got the new, uh, new fly, the not the flywheel, but the drive disc uh, rubber in. Uh, a lot nicer, a little bit more tread on it. Uh, I'll show you guys the other one. I just got to tighten up the bolts. I got to actually put the bolts in there. Uh, but here's the old one. Um, definitely cracked. Um, there's like little to no tread on that. So, I'm going to just put those bolts on, and uh, put the bearings back in, put the drive disc on. Okay, well, I got the new uh, drive disc on, um, working very nicely. Uh, I brought up just throwing a little grease on the bearings real quick. Uh, you definitely, when you're doing this, you want to make sure you don't get any uh, grease or debris onto the disc, or else this, um, this drive disc will not, um, not work properly. Um, but next we got the little spring-loaded piece down here that's rotted out. Um, so let me see if I can get this out of there. Come on. And there we go. Here's that. Now if we look at the new one, it um, goes like that. Um, it's broken the little hook off, which isn't a big deal. It's a common, you know. And this part here is only like $2.50 pretty much. Um, but yeah. There's, um, there's that. We're going to stick that hey, on there. That was pretty simple. Uh, stuck the new one on. Um, show how it works. You, this is mainly the little squeeze grip up here for the auger control. And, um, there we go. It's working very nicely. All releases nicely. Uh, very tight. That's how all they should work. Um, next, uh, i got to stick the wheels back on. And I'm going to be doing the skid plates next. Okay, wheels are on, uh, working very nicely. Um, one tip is um, when you're going to do a drive disc and there's like tons of grease on it, uh, you can use diesel fuel. And uh, diesel fuel will, um, will clean up the disc real nice, um, won't have any uh, oil residue on it left. So there's a good little tip for you. Um, so yeah. I was just inspecting all these teeth on it. Um, everything looks real good. Uh, usually, sometimes they're missing a tooth or something like that, but everything in here was looking pretty nice. 
Um, wheels run on pretty simply. Um, I notice which one is this one right here. It's going to need a tube eventually, but um, still probably needs some air. Um, this isn't a big deal. Common. I uh, don't see any nail holes or anything in it. It might be just um, losing its um, bead going around the tire. Um, so that might be the problem. I bet you it's all rusted in the rim. You can tell by the tire. But um, yeah, that's all set. Now for the skid plates, I'm um, getting ready to put on. Um, these right here are pretty much all bent out and shit. So, uh, I'm going to just pop those off real quick and uh, I'll put the new ones on. So, here are the new ones right here. And uh, stick those on real quick. Oop, there goes the old spring. Don't need that. But uh, yeah. Alright, well stick the skid plates on are on. Um, those bolts on are pretty simple. They just carried the bolts that are on it. Um, get them on both sides. Uh, what you want to do is when you go to put this down, I'm not going to do it just yet, but I'll do it tomorrow. Because uh, I'm going to leave it up because I still got to put um, new belts and stuff in. Um, just put this down, adjust on a flat surface. You want to have at least about um, about a half an inch of uh, clearance on the bottom there. Uh, depending on like your driveway surface. Like for us, because uh, our driveway is like beat to shit, we, uh, I got to adjust it to one uh, to a half inch. Um, this guy here, I guess he's gonna be on a dirt, um, dirt path, so he's got like a dirt driveway, so I'm gonna adjust his prior to about seven eighths or so, uh, maybe a half inch, don't quite know yet, um, so, his were originally on the half inch mark, so I might, uh, put it on that again, but, um, when you're doing, a, when you're working on, like, a customer's, um, uh, materials and stuff like that, when you got, like, all the stuff, uh, what I like to do is I like to keep the box and I also like to put um, all the original parts back in the box. Um, here's what actually one of the skid plates. Look at how crooked that thing is. Uh, Go to show how much he wore them down considering they're on a flat surface as the other side. And this one didn't even have the bottom on it. So these things here I usually like to put uh, everything back in the box um, so that I can show the guy what we replaced when we weren't going to rip them off. Um, also what do I do with that sheet? Son of a bitch. Oh, here's a sheet. Um, also, want to keep uh, all your receipts and stuff in the, in the box as well. Um, tomorrow night's video, uh, I'm going to be replacing the uh, the belts and stuff. Uh, these here are the belts that go on this. Um, let me see if I can put these around my hood here. Um, this one, these two right here are the belts for the auger. It's a dual auger belt system here. Um... So these are originally were supposed to be half inch, so I'd say they're about a quarter inch now, uh, maybe three eighths. Um, this is the drive uh, belt as well. This one's probably down to three eighths. So this is going to get, um, they're both going to get replaced. They're probably about uh, ten bucks a piece, so he's about thirty bucks in belts. Uh, I usually get the Goodyear belts because they just last longer than the cheap uh, MTD ones. And the MTD wanted uh, for one one of these belts uh, was about. 16.45 for the drive and for the twin auger belts they wanted um, 25 bucks a piece for them so I'm saving the guy quite a bit of money by going down to Eastern Bearings and Waltham um, by getting the parts there so pretty much this thing will be wrapped up tomorrow night um, I gotta do the tune up on it tomorrow uh, do the oil chain spark plug uh, carburetor and I'll also adjust those skid plates down below um, other than that, that's pretty much about it. This guy is pretty much out of here. Just uh, throw some fresh, drain the old gas, put some fresh gas in it, and he's uh, pretty much good to go. But um, yeah, that's about it. And tomorrow, also, I'm going to work on the snowmobile trailer out there. Um, so, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. So, oh yeah, and here's the, uh, the belt cover. Uh, this actually also acts as a retainer. Uh, for your belts, it actually guides everything in. So if this is like cracked or broken, you definitely want to replace it. Because uh, these MTDs, they don't like to be broken. <laughs> they like to be fixed properly. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little machine. Um, I wouldn't personally buy an MTD. Um, I would personally buy either a Craftsman or an Arians. Um, Craftsman, if I was going to do like the small stuff like what we have here, but if I'm going to do like a big thing. Uh, definitely buying Arians because those things are pretty badass. Um, 
it's pretty much the Cadillac of snowblowers. But um, don't go out and buy like a Walmart one at Walmart because they just they suck. They don't even have real uh, engines on them. I think they call like power builds. Um, just recently, MTD actually switched to uh, power built, so you won't even see Tecumseh Motor no more. Because uh, Tecumseh went out of business. Um, I was talking with uh, Corvair Wild on um, YouTube. He wanted me to send him a PM. Um, actually, I could probably send this video to you. Uh, I'll do a quick explaining of it. Um, for you, man, you get like a shaft uh, difference. You can't put a Briggs and Stratton shaft into a Tecumseh motor. Uh, it won't work. Uh, but I've seen your snowblower yours is like an older Arians. If I, me personally, I think I'd uh, just pick another one up off a of Craigslist or something like that. Because um, you don't know how much longer you're going to get out of that frame and stuff. Um, but if you do need to get a motor, just let me know. I can help you out. I'm pretty good at finding them. Uh, i got a guy coming in next week um, trying to find a motor for me. Um, or i would got to find a motor for him, actually. Um, so, yeah, man, just uh, send me the lengths of your shaft and stuff. Um, it's like I said, like I got tons of, ooh shit, don't break my plow. Um, I got tons of blocks there. I mean, I got that block there, I got that block right there, and there's a bunch more out in the back, um, with blow motors and stuff, so I'm used to swapping out motors, um, swapped motor on Tecumseh's, onto Briggs and Stratton, everyone's switching to Briggs and Stratton now, because they don't make really Tecumseh parts no more, it's kind of hard to find, um, but Parts Tree has them, PartsTree.com, so... I uh, hope I helped you out, uh, Corvair Wild. Um, definitely, if you can give me like the length of your shaft. Um, I don't actually have a shaft down here, but um, but yeah. Usually, it's it, there's like millions of shaft sizes, there's like seven eighths, three quarters. Um, like on where's my tiny brakes? Uh oh, where's my oh there it is. Um, so Corvair Wild, when you go to if you do go to buy a new motor. You know the shaft size, and me bring this thing into the light, or maybe I'm in the light, yeah, there we go. Uh, you need to know the thickness of your shaft. Um, you don't really care too much about the bolt. Uh, pretty much they all have a quarter inch uh, tapered keyway, uh, or a straight keyway. Or, and you also need to know the length of your shaft, like going that way. Uh, I don't know this one, I think this one's like um, 2 and 13 sixteenths or something like that. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to um, know your shaft sizes and stuff like that before you stick a brand new uh, motor on it. Um, some actually also have like a step off pattern. Um, some also have like my Uncle Allen's, how that one had that extra pulley coming out the side. Actually this one here is actually good. Let me show you this. I'll tip this down. Ooh. Kind of a little bit stuck. Um, but yeah man, this one here has got the dual pulley, one right there. And then there's another one here. This one actually works as well. Um, when this one's turned, you can kind of see that one moving. But you just got to know what size your shaft is. I think this one here is a one-inch shaft with a quarter-inch keyway. Um, and then this has the step-off pattern right here, so that way all your belts and stuff line up right. So definitely want to make sure that's right, Corvair. Um, definitely here to help you. Uh, I know you're one of my new subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so, yep, this guy needs some oil big time. He's just dinked, I tell you.